Hey there, friends. I'm a minute or two early just seeing if everyone can get logged in for today's Pep Club Pretty Easy Painting. Uh, we are celebrating Galentine's Day and Valentine's Day today. So if you don't know what Galentine's Day is, um, it's something that uh, Leslie Nope on Parks and Rec came up with, and it's a way to celebrate our gal friends. And you know what? And I like our male gal friends too, to be part of this. So happy Valentine's Day, that's February 13th, and happy Valentine's Day, that's February 14th. We are working on the Love Kittens project today. So if you saw my mural, um, day a few weeks ago when I was painting that mural, uh, I was wearing this skirt, uh, which is based on my original painting that has been adopted, thankfully, and I think some sweethearts gave it to one another. Um, so this painting is no longer in my possession, it's been adopted, so all I have is my skirt from my red bubble shop to show you today. So we are going to start off, um, by getting myself organized here. I thought I'd start today by showing you my face and see if I could get more people interested by seeing some teeth and not just my painting surface. But I'm gonna turn myself around now, so um, excuse me if this makes you a little seasick. I'm gonna turn my camera around, show you uh, my, my work surface, one of the things on my work surface. So grab, hey JD. Hey, Hidden Landmarks fans. Hey, Veronica, Kathy, thank you so much for being here. So I am gonna turn my camera around and make it so you can see my painting surface. So friends, if we get bumped off the internet today because of the robots, um, just stick around because I am gonna, I will restart a new live video because I want you to see as much as you can of the painting process. So, um, as I showed you on the skirt, we are going to do some love kittens today to celebrate Galentine's Day and Valentine's Day. So this is the general idea of the project, um, but I thought I'd show you a close up here of a kitty cat face. That's sort of the shape of the face that I'm going to make. And here's another sample of a kitty cat. This is of our dead cat, Pumpkin. She was a very good cat. She is over the rainbow bridge, but um, that's sort of a kitty cat face that might show up today. And to make things a little bit different today, typically I work on a, a canvas when I'm with all of you, but today I'm gonna work on some mixed media paper. Uh, I like this Canson brand paper, the mixed media. The watercolor paper is nice too. This 98 pounds, that means a ream of this weighs 98 pounds. So the heavier, uh, the larger that number is, um, the heavier weight your page is. And my size is nine by 12, which is kind of a weird shape, um, but you know, you do what you gotta do. So I thought I'd work on this paper today just to show you how it, how it painted up, how it looked. And I think you're a little far away from me, so let me see if I can. All right, folks, this is live TV, right? I am moving the entire set. Haha, <laughs> don't hold your breath. Don't knock over your wet paints. Don't knock over your tea, very important. Let's see if I can get you all a little closer to me. Woo, she didn't knock anything over. Okay, so here is the paper I'm going to be working on. Here is my palette. Uh, let's see if I can shimmy. Um, and okay, so I'm gonna move the palette a little bit further. I've got a lot of my Liquitex paints out today, the fluid acrylics I like. So acrylic paint is not oil paint, da-da. Acrylic paint is basically um, plastic polymer, uh, resin and uh, some pigment involved. So we are using acrylic paint today. It dries very quickly, but that's okay because I paint very quickly. I thought I would start by showing you how to doodle this. So if you're playing along at home, you've got a pen and a paper, or if you've got your markers or crayons, whatever you're using, you don't need to use actual paint to pro to get this progress, this process going. Um, I want you to use whatever you have around. So sort of in the middle, 
I'm gonna start with a heart and I'm using my favorite dead Sharpie. So it's a Sharpie that uh, the ink has basically worn out. So I'm starting with a heart and each side of this heart is gonna be the kitty cat tail. Um, so one kitty cat tail is gonna come over here and one kitty cat tail is gonna go over there and there'll be like an overlap, okay? Um, and then we need the kitty cat body. I also, so I call this the love kittens, but I also call it look at my butt. You know, anybody who's ever had a cat knows that they love just to show you their bum. Um, my friend, Emily Swan, a swan named Emily all over the internet, she just did the cutest cartoon of her cat waking her up in the morning, showing her her bum. And I would definitely say Emily is one of my Galentine friends. I like to celebrate with Emily. So right now it's looking like a swan. So I've got this side of the cat tail. I put a little leg in the uh, here on this side and its head is gonna come over here. And the head is just basically a big smiley face kind of shape. Um, and then I like extra pointy ears because I like kind of a wild cat. I had this cat named Violet Kitty who just was wild from the minute I got her as a kitten. She did not want to be a cat. She wanted to be chasing boys and, and, and hanging out and drinking beer. She did not want to be a cat. So I like that she, and she had those big pointy ears. So there's one paw and there's another paw. And then the other kitty will be butt to butt with this kitty. And back leg. And I'm doing this very quickly because I want to get to the fun part. I want to get to the part where we're slapping around some color. But you can see very simple shapes. There's a, there's a U shape and some pointy ears. And you can use a pencil to do this part. You don't need to use a marker. I'm using a marker here because I want to make sure that you can see what the heck I'm doing on camera. Uh, get a paw in there and a paw in there. All right, so it's like, look at my butt. No, you look at my butt. Okay, cuteness, cuteness. Oh, you know what? I flipped this. This is definitely different than the original. In the original, the the tails were on the opposite sides. All right, that's all right. We're gonna keep rolling with it. Each one is unique, just like you. Bespoke paintings, highly inaccurate pet portraits by Philomena. Okay, so that is the basic shape. I am going to pick up something with a straight edge so I can get a straight line to put a, uh, a background floor on. If you've been here before, you know that straight lines aren't always easy for me, so use a tool. So I'm gonna use this straight line to drop in. That's where the cats are sitting. So they're sitting on something. They're not space kitties just hanging out, uh, floating. All right, so this is a good start. All right, and then please, whenever you are making, uh, especially with painting, but whatever it is that you're using, put your art supplies on the side closest to your body. So uh, to your dominant hand is what I'm trying to say. Let's see if I can pull this up a little. Hold on folks, it may get rocky. I tightened this. Let's see if I can untighten it, get you a little higher. Ooh. So my friend JD is helping me on the comments today. Thank you so much, JD. JD is the brilliant mind behind many things, but especially Hidden Landmarks TV. If you're watching this over on Hidden Landmarks TV, thank you for hanging out. Thanks for being with us. Um, I am excited to be here. JD goes live every Friday morning at nine and he has just the coolest, the coolest content. Okay, so we've got our two kitties. I think I am gonna do, I like an orange and a black cat. Um, and of course, if you've been here, you know I don't use a lot of black, so I'll probably be using this Payne's Gray. Uh, that's my favorite sort of dark color. So one of the kitties is gonna be darker and then the other. And I'm gonna start by dropping in some of the background. I think, you know what, and I think I'll go pink again. So I'm using uh, Quinacono Magenta here and my, and my, favorite Trakel brushes. 
Turkel brushes are handmade out in California. They're really great and they're really, really lovely to artists. They really support the arts. And notice I'm going right over these tails. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's part of my LOL approach, the lots of layers. And you can see the, the paper is fold, uh, bending up a little, is curling. That's just because I have quite a lot of water happening right here. But this paper is great. It will flatten out um, once everything is dry. And you know what? If it doesn't flatten out, here's, here's your pro, first pro tip of the day. Are you ready? Maybe it's the second pro tip. Um, you ready? Is you can iron this. So you can take a dry iron. You can take a dry iron and iron this after it's all painted. You might want to put something like a paper bag in between the painting and your iron. Uh, but a dry iron on a lower setting, you can flatten out this paper. I've done it a bunch of times. It works. Okay, so I'm going to let that pink dry down a little bit. I'm getting a little extra water. Uh, another tip, please, if you're painting, always start with freshy, fresh, clean water. If you have water that um, is contaminated with a lot of colors, it's going to be murky. And if it is murky, then you know what's going to happen is all of your paint is going to show up murky too. So are we seeing this okay? Weird. Okay. All right. So I am going to use uh, another one of my favorite colors. This is teal by... Uh, golden again, fluid acrylic, and I'm gonna drop in. And you can see this is much more opaque, or meaning you can't see through it. And I'm just sort of negative shape painting around the kitties. And if I go into the kitty fur a little bit, it doesn't matter. Just gonna be part of my lots of layers. Again, you could use just a pencil to get that going, that drawing. I like uh, I like to use the marker so that you can see it on screen. And also, I don't mind seeing that initial sketch come through. These are fun, energetic, playful paintings. Um, we are leaving the realism for somebody else today. If that is your jam, great. Um, I'm taking a, a class online right now to be able to paint digital portraits that are more realistic. Uh, less stylized. So I, I get it that it's fun to um, try to make something look lifelike, but that's not what we're doing today. We are going for fun, folk art inspired uh, kitty cats. Let's see, I'm going to pick up this round brush from Trakel, a little bit of water, then I wipe it off on my cloth. And let's see, I think I am going to make you, you're in front. So I think I'm going to make you orange. And so I'm going to start off with this pyrrole orange from uh, Golden Fluid. And I'm just, oh my gosh. So how is that color coming out for you? Because it is amazing in person. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm getting some more um, water on my brush. Am I going outside the lines? You betcha. Does it matter? Nope. Nope. But yeah, so I teach uh, elementary art two days a week at a private school here in Elmira, New York. And, um, you know, there are times, certain grades where I'm trying to get uh, their, the kids' eye-hand coordination to link up. Um, so I do ask them sometimes to stay in the lines when they're coloring. And I have to say, my heart hurts a little bit every time I say it uh, because, you know, it's sort of like you learn the rules so you can break the rules. Um, I also, I definitely give them um, projects where I'm like, you know what, friends, boys and girls and everybody in between, just go for it. I don't care if you're in the lines or out of the lines, but sometimes I have to ask them to stay in the lines and, ooh, I feel like, uh, I feel like, I'm doing a little bit of a disservice, but okay. So I'm going to let that dry down a little. I like that pink coming through the tail. I am eventually going to think about a light source. Like um, if these kitty cats have uh, some glow to them, how that glow will turn out. And so this kitty over here, I'm going to use um, my favorite Payne's Gray, but I'm actually going to mix it with some white here. 
because I don't want it to be quite as heavy. So this is an opaque titanium white. So titanium white does a couple of things. It tints your hue. Hue means basically the name of your color and it tints it, it changes how intense it is, but it also makes it opaque. So if your paint wasn't opaque before, the titanium white will make it more opaque. And oh, I'm just loosely going over everything. Okay, we're in focus, we're good. If my camera is going in and out of focus, I do apologize. I The camera is trying to focus on the end of my paintbrush. So I'm apologize for that, but you know, we're here making it up as we go along, trying our best, figuring out the technology. Again, I do hope that we stay live the entire time this week. If we don't, just stay put. I will, as soon as I recognize that we haven't, um, that we've lost our connection, I will pop back on and continue on a, with a new live video. Do, 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 do. Oh, I am living this already. I am loving this already. So let's see. Huh. I'm almost wondering if they're looking away from each other. So instead of looking towards each other, what do you think? I would love though to paint up some cat faces with you all. But I'm seeing, are you seeing that on on uh, on the screen? To me, it, um, it looks like their body position has them looking away from one another. And again, I swapped the tails. In the last one, I had this tail coming this way and that tail. Uh, but each one is bespoke. I seem, think that's like the, the word of the last couple of years, bespoke, meaning like one of a kind, specially created. All right, so... Yeah, I should let that dry down a little. Let's see. Cuteness, cuteness, cuteness. All right. I am going to wipe off my brush onto another canvas. I've been working on this extra canvas for a couple of weeks if you've been here. Thanks for hanging out. Again, I'd like to not have any of this acrylic paint go down into the waterways, so I get off as much paint as I can before I put it into my water. So this is gonna be some sort of wacky floral painting. Look, it's like a two for, you get a two for one here hanging out uh, on the pet club. We could almost call it the pet club. Uh, so exciting news on Friday, we're gonna have a special edition pep club Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, I am uh, painting an adoptable pet from Brick City Rescue. They are in New Jersey. My amazing, wonderful, beautiful, smart sister-in-law uh, has two doggos from them and she volunteers with them and tries to promote their cause. So I am painting an amazing dog named Winky on Friday at 7 p.m. Um, working to get that dog adopted. Oh my gosh, uh, such a looker. We'll see how that uh, goes. And okay, so this is this is dry-ish. So I'm gonna put in some kitty cat face details. Let's see, we are still live. Awesome sauce. All right, so I am gonna, I'm picking up with a smaller brush. I am picking up some of this Payne's Gray. And here's another art tip. So if you roll your brush and lift at the same time, it'll help you to get a nice point there. So let's see. I am rushing because uh, I want this all to come together for you and so that you can see as much of the process as possible. Um, but if I were doing this without you watching, I would, I would slow down and take my time. I can already see that nose is a little bigger than I really wanted. That's okay. So I'm going to, so it starts off as a triangle and I put a little dip in it for a kitty cat. Um, and then I like to, them to sort of look like they are, um, not amused. So it's a line down and then basically an upside down Y. So look, that, can you see the grumpy cat face happening? 
Um, if I were to just flick those sides up a little bit, it would suddenly become a cute, uh, funny, sweet looking cat versus a cat that is just over it. So I'm gonna maybe do that again. So I've got a triangle working. So there's a triangle. And then I put a little divot right there to give it more of a heart shape. And a line down and meh. <laughs> I crack up when they have that face. I'm not trying to make animals that look uh, sour to like, like make other people feel sour. It just kind of cracks me up. So, all right, so I've got that. I'm gonna make this paw back here a little darker cause it's a little bit more in shadow. I'm gonna use my finger again. Kids at home, please don't use your fingers too much. Or if you do, make sure your hands are clean before you eat something or put them near your face. So I am now doing some shading so that it has more of a rounded shape over on here. So again, this is the Payne's Gray. Um, so I often use it in place of black. I think it has just more energy to it. It's a little more interesting. I do use black, uh, you know, for sure, but I really like this Payne's Gray a lot. When I painted Mr. Magoo for the Shimon County SPCA, uh, he has since been adapted and I've seen some pictures. He is happily settling into his home. I started off with Payne's Gray and then I went, I did add some black because he was a gray kitty. Um, this is, so that's a, what I'm getting at is don't worry if your color choice isn't right the first go around. You can make amendments. So I'm going to put some shading into the tail. I'm going to turn it. So now my, your kitty cats are upside down. Um, and again, see how the paper has uh, sort of laid down a little bit now uh, that it's dried? I really like this Canson uh, paper. Not, hashtag not sponsored, hashtag why not uh, sponsor me. All right, so there, just to show that it's a little bit more rounded. So that's one of the magical things about two-dimensional art, two-dimensional art. So we have uh, height and width on this paper, but we don't have any like depth to this. So we are fooling the eye by making some of our areas, areas lighter or darker, or maybe even using warmer or cooler hues uh, to make things look rounded, to make things look like they, um, aren't so two-dimensional that they are three-dimensional. And it's really, it absolutely fascinates me um, that the whole process of put, making something that's 2D look three-dimensional. Oh, it's just really exciting. Like I know how it works. I know so, what the tricks are, but I'm still amazed. I'm still amazed. I painted a mural on Lake Street in Elmira last summer called Dragonfly Love, and I incorporated bubbles into it. Um, and the bu bubbles look like they're coming off the wall. And even though I painted it, I designed it, I figured it out. I'm still amazed <laughs> when I walk by it. I'm like, wow, that really looks three-dimensional. So you see, I added some white highlight at the top of the tail there. Um, again, make it look like it's coming for you. I've said this before, I'll say it again, with these acrylic paints, you have to do your uh, highlights a number of times because so, the paint is gonna dry about 10% darker and it's gonna, uh, and uh, so you may have to go back to your highlights a couple of times. So now I'm gonna give them big eyes, they're sort of almond shaped eyes. Again, not realistic. This is like a folk art technique. Look at some cat's pictures online, you know, just Google feline eyes or something like that. Uh, and you, you can get a realistic uh, um, reference of what a kitty cat eye is, but I have had enough cats uh, and painted enough cats to kind of know the shape uh, how many cats have I had at one time, you may ask? 
we had four. The four was our top number. When my husband and I uh, first moved in together, he had two kitty cats and I had two kitty cats. It was like the Brady Bunch. And then we had four. Um, and that is a lot of cats to have, I have to say. So I have had enough cats, seen enough cat eyeballs poking me in the morning, say, give me some snacks. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna let the eyes dry down a little. Now let's add some highlight to that tail. And so to darken up this orange, um, there's a couple of things I could do. I'm, I could add the complementary, which is this blue and orange or complementary. That might make it a little bit muddy, but what I think I'll do instead, here she goes using all the brushes, folks. Ooh, and I'll use the cat tongue tail, uh, cat tongue shaped uh, paintbrush. I'm going to take some of this orange and some of this magenta and then I get a deeper color. I don't know if that's coming up on camera for you. Some of this orange, some of that magenta, and that's going to give me a deeper tone so that I can, yeah, get like some shading in here. And again, I'm letting some of that pink come through from the background because I just think it's more interesting. A little water on my brush. So some shading here to show that that leg is coming forward. Some shading here on the belly, definitely on that back paw, a little bit on the paw there. So cute, so cute. All right. Again, I am working a lot more quickly than I'm gonna suggest that you do. You take your time. All right, I'm gonna give them some pink noses. So I've got this Holbein pink here. Um, Compose Rose is, is the name of the color and it is by uh, Holbein. They are a great paint company. Love them. Little pink noses. Again, this somehow I gave this this one a big old nose. That's all right. Cute, 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 cute. And now that I'm thinking of it, I think I want to give them some more snout definition. Snout definition. I, I'm sure that is the technical term for you know any vets in the audience today. Snout definition. So I'm picking up some of this blue. And I'm just sort of gonna block in some snout, put some details around the eyeballs. We are still live, that's exciting. Little darker here. And so let's see, maybe I'll go darker on that side. I went too far and my paint was too wet. All right, minor problem. We'll fix it, it'll be fine. Uh, let's see, we'll give, so if this is the darker side, let's see, give it some definition here, little definition there. Oh my gosh, they are cute. They are cute. All right, so same thing on our orange kitty. Ooh, we should have a naming contest. Let's name these kitties. What do you think? What do you think? Felix and Oscar. Let's see. Tina and Amy. What do you think? Oh, you know what else, folks? I also need some help deciding what we're gonna paint next week. So again, this Friday at seven, I'm going to be doing a live painting um, of Winky, the ad dog up for adoption via Brick City Rescue. I'm gonna be painting him live. Um, but for next week, I'm not sure what I wanna paint. So leave us a comment, drop us, drop us your suggestion for what I should paint next week. And maybe that's a fun thing for us to do with this series too, is, you know, I'd love it to be more interactive. I would love um, all of y'all to really feel part of this as I'm doing it for your, you know, your edification, your entertainment, give you something to think about that isn't 
the government or vaccines or, you know, something a little more uh, lighthearted. You know, got to take it. We got to take a break from the news. So let's paint some kitties. I have mixed in some blue here, so I'm getting sort of a dulled down orange here. Quick choppy strokes, as one of my paint mentors would say, quick choppy strokes. He also would say, make sure everyone knows how fun it is to be a painter. Like show them how fun it is to be a painter. Thanks for hanging out. Again, if for some reason we get cut off, stay put. I will, as soon as I notice, I will start up a new live session so we can get a little further. All right. So there is definitely some drama going on over here. Um, but I'm going to wait on that. To, I'm going to wait on dealing on that with that drama for a minute. And put in some kitty cat eyeballs. So I brought this bright green out. And this is Liquitex Basic, so that's, you know, you can get it at Michael's. It's very inexpensive. I like it a whole lot. It is, you know, like one grade down from the golden, but it's still a really good paint, I think. All right, so, um, so for the eyeballs, I'm going to do like a diamond shape. Is this accurate? Nope. Is it cute? Yup. And I like it. And I actually go above the the background of the eye a little bit. It just, I like them sort of alien looking uh, kitty cats. Again, look at, it just, I want you to have fun. I don't want you to worry too much about um, the the end result. I want you to have fun with the process. So now I'm going to pick up some of the yellow and dip that in there. And again, I am going quickly here because I want you to get through as much of this as possible with me. And as always, um, any updates that I do to this, I will post here on Facebook and on uh, my Instagram, which is Philomena Jack Studio over on Instagram. Um, and I often send out... Um, extra bit, tidbits, back, backstage tidbits over on my Patreon page. So if you find Philomena Jack Studio over on Patreon, um, thank you to my current patrons. You really mean the world to me. Um, all right, so <laughs> they're cracking me up. All right, so I'm going to fix up that face where I kind of went a little bonkers there. So... I am gonna pick up some of the lighter blue there. And I know I told you to have your palette on your dominant side, but uh, somehow the way I've got the camera set up is not uh, not useful for that. Let's see. So when you want things to come forward, so, uh, they should have, relative to everything else that's going on, they should be lighter and or warmer in color. So cooler colors will recede, will go back, and warmer colors will come forward. Same thing with light colors. Uh, in relation to what's around it, uh, light colors will come forward and darker colors or darker hues, tints, darker tints of hues, use some of our real art terminology here, will uh, come forward. So it just kind of gave them cheeks. Do cats have cheeks? Not really, kind of. I don't know, but I think it's cute. So I'm giving them some cheeks. Let's see. I have some of this neon orange that I use a lot. And I love it. I'm just going to throw some on this kitty. Oh my gosh, it's cute. Can you see how much darker this orange is now that it's dried down? When I first popped that on, it really was super intense, wasn't it? And now that it's dry, it is definitely, um, it has definitely chilled out. And so the same thing is gonna happen with this neon. But these neons are also really great for mixing with non-neon colors. They do some really magical things when they start hanging out together. Sound effects always helpful. All right. 
So once that dries down a little, I'm gonna give them some pinky cheeks. I'm gonna add some more details. Let's get some orange here, because this would be closer to us, right? So it would be a bit brighter. And that little paw. And let's see, we'll just do a little bit there. <laughs> it's cracking me up. Are you cracking up at home? I don't know, I'm laughing. I'm having a good time. So. Once again, my, my friend JD um, of Hidden Landmarks TV, and he's also a, a super fine realtor here in the, in the Western New York region. Um, he is helping me on the, with the comments today. So uh, I might, can't see your comments right now, but I will get back to you. You can also send me an email at philomenajackstudio at gmail. Uh, cute and these this the, another reason I wanted to paint on paper today is I wanted to you to see that you don't need really precious materials to make some fun happen this is paper I, this this notebook that I have has 60 sheets in it right so if you're doing pencil sketches essentially you could you know do one every other page or something and you know, get 30 beautiful sketches. You could have 60 paintings from that book. Um, okay, I'm going to add some details to the background. Um, I am gonna add some of these circles. Now here, again, I am kind of rushing here because again, I want you to get through this, but this should be dry before I do this. I am potentially making a mess, but I'm gonna do it. All right, so I am going to take some of this pink and I am, whoop, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, so I just have a stencil here with some circles and I'm just running some pink paint, always coming uh, to, towards the center, not towards the edge of the stencil because then the paint won't go under it so much. Am I trying to get them perfect? No, I am not. I, it's just part of the LOL of it all, the lots of layers. So I'm putting some circles in here, avoiding the kitty. I could have put the circles in first and then plopped the kitties on top. That would have been smart too. But again, I'm sort of making this up as we go along. So this one's a little bit wet, so I'm just gonna dab it. And dab it, there we go. Lift. Ooh, and got some interesting things happening in the background. I'll do that over here. So it's a good idea to have things happen in multiples. Multiples of three and a lot of design is, is really helpful. Let's see, I'll put one right here, a little bit there. And a little bit there. Perfectly imperfect, excellent. Ooh, I like it. It's sort of like a wallpaper idea. So I'm going to do it everywhere except for where the heart is, where their tails are coming together. So that will really make the tails pop. I'm just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. I love this stencil. I think I got it from Stencil Girl. If you're into stencils, check out Stencil Girl. Again, hashtag not sponsored. Let's see, and I use it a lot. I use it a lot, so I'm avoiding the tail area because I want that to look a little more special. I could freehand this, I absolutely could, but there's something about the regular spacing of this stencil that I like, and I also like that it looks, you know, I've used it so many times in other paintings, it sort of looks like a Philomena painting because of using the same stencil. So I'm picking up some of my darker pink again and then maybe I'll just sort of give it a little bit of a bubble effect. And this one turned out to look like a fish. How nice, just like cats would like that. So I'm just adding that, that LOL factor, the lots of layers. Look at those cats, that is cute. All right, so kind of got a little pink in the tail there, so I'm going to take care of that. Everything is fixable. Remember, paintings very often go through multiple ugly stages, 
And when you hit an ugly stage, you should be grateful because that means that you are making progress. If it looked great the whole time, uh, I would be worried. It would mean that I maybe haven't pushed it far enough or or something. At least that's what I tell myself. Um, all right. Super cute. And now I'm going to add a little highlight onto this pink. Again, I am going quickly here. We are about 40 minutes in. And typically this would take me maybe four hours over two days. I might work on something like this. So we definitely need a shadow. I do not like to have things just sitting on a space without a shadow. I have uh, forgotten where my light source is coming from. So I guess if maybe it's coming from this side. So uh, this teal that we have, I'm mixing up a little bit, taking that teal that we had and mixing in some of the Payne's Gray, Payne's Gray, and just throw in a shadow under the kitties. They would be blocking some light, wouldn't they? A little bit of negative shape painting. A little bit of here. And so your shadow is always darkest at where it intersects with the object. So last week we did um, a cup of hot cocoa and the shadow, if you remember, we did a really dramatic shadow. It's always darkest where it's touching the object. And then it filters. It gets lighter as it moves away. And the color of the shadow depends on atmosphere and the color of the light hitting it and all kinds of stuff. But we are just using what we think is groovy right now. See, I love having a shadow on things. I really feel like it elevates your piece. Uh, let's see. And oh, and I kind of like some of this has bled into one another. Can you see right here where the, the teal has bled into the pink? And because I had a lot of water in my brush, and because this is paper, not canvas, it's more porous, right? Right. So it, um, it moves a little bit more, and I, I kind of like that. All right, so I want to get some pink on these cheeks. So again, folks, thanks for hanging out. I'm going to be live again on Friday, this Friday uh, at 7 p.m. in conjunction with uh, Brick City Rescue, a puppy res doggy rescue in New Jersey. Um, we are, I am going to be painting Winky, one of their pets up for adoption. Oh, Winky is so sweet. He's got a big head. The ears are crazy cute. I can't wait to paint those ears. Um, I'm doing that uh, again in conjunction with Brick City Rescue. So, uh, we'll see if we can't get Winky adopted. Worked really well when we were working on Mr. Magoo. Remember Mr. Magoo, the blind kitty? Um, he got adopted straight away. I'm adding a little white to there. And we need whiskers. Of course we need whiskers. So I'm taking my smallest Trakel brush. Um, dipping into my Payne's Gray. I am doing this too quickly, really. I would wait. This would be one of the last things I did. But I like them to have a couple of freckles. Whenever I do Bunsy, Bunsy, my rabbit, always has freckles. A couple of freckles. And now this is just like when we did the stems on the, on the floral a couple of weeks ago. You can't think about it too much. You gotta make your line and move on. And make your lines going from the non-dominant side to your dominant side so that you don't get your hand um, in all of the wet paint. So one, two, three, bada bing. Picking up some more paint. One, two, three, bada bing. All right, don't think too much about it. Just kinda do it. Be brave, my friends. Boop, boop, boop. Oh my God, it's cute. Is it cute or is it cute? I think it's pretty cute. Um, 
I am feeling like I want to add a little bit of lightness right here just to break up that background a little. I went into the kitty paw just to switch it up a little. And I also want to put some details on the paws, like the little boop boop sound effects. Always using sound effects. Boop boop. All right. Okay. All right, I'm going to call this one complete for today. Is it complete? No, I still have some stuff I want to do on it, but it's quite wet. And we've been together for about 45 minutes. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, I love, love, love doing these pep clubs, and I hope you enjoy it too. And if you do enjoy it, please share it with your friends. Um, uh, share it with your non-friends. <laughs> share it with people you want to make friends with. If you're flirting with someone, you're like, hey, Want to take an online class together? This would be fun. Maybe Who knows? That's a good first date, I think. So happy Valentine's Day, my friends. Happy Galentine's Day to my, my girlfriends, my boyfriends, my all my friends in between. Um, I hope you're having a super great day. Thank you to JD and Hidden Landmarks TV. Be sure to go over to Hidden Landmarks and hit that... Um, uh, join button because there is a lot of great stuff. You can see JD every day, every Friday at nine and then um, Hidden Landmarks Victory Garden is going to start off in a little bit. Oh my gosh. And there's going to be some other behind the scenes fun stuff ha happening. Uh, it's exciting. So thank you for being here. Thank you to my patron patrons over on Patreon. I'll see you Friday 7 p.m. Come on back and let's paint a dog. Goodbye everyone. Bye.